What's happening, everybody? I'm Steve, and welcome back to Junk Drummer TV, where I give my analysis, my hot takes, and my initial reactions on the drummers of today and yesterday, and maybe tomorrow if I stick around that long. I am a professional drum teacher and a gigging musician, and I have been for the last 20 years. So before we get into today's video, I would like to give a shout out to a commenter who hit me up on one of my videos and asked me to go to his channel and watch him play and, you know, hit him up with some uh, critiques, comments, that kind of thing. This has happened before and I've done it to everyone who has asked because that's what I'm here for, man. I'm here to help. I'm here for a resource for you all. And this cat's name is Jeremy Hayes. I'm going to put the name of his YouTube channel right here. It's Jaya Drums. Check this guy out. So, you know, I've done this a few other times and they've all been, you know, pretty good drummers. Man, this cat is one of the best drummers, I think, that's on YouTube. He's a uh, gospelchops.com type cat. He's a sacred drummer for sure. And uh, I've said before uh, on other videos, I went to an HBCU, so I really look up to that style of playing. When I was uh, struggling in the music department, there were all these just god of drums that have been playing in church since they were like seven years old. And they were just heads and shoulders above where I was and I tried to cop that 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 style and technique as much as possible and I didn't do a great job of it but uh Jeremy Hayes Jaya drums everybody go check that guy out you're going to be seeing more of him I think if you're into like Thomas Pridgen and again that gospelchops.com type uh playing you're going to love this guy with that out of the way, and I swear, Jeremy, this is not a rib I told you that I was going to give you a shout out on my next video but today Let's conjure Satan, shall we? That's right, we're going to be watching Dave Lombardo back when he was still with Slayer, and he's going to be doing Angel of Death. Before we get into the video, I would like to do a little story time with Steve. Because I think I have the most ridiculous story about how someone has come to uh, know and like Slayer. In another life and time, I used to attend church with my grandmother, and I really hope my mom all doesn't see this, but I probably went to church from about, until about 12 or 13. As you've heard me on other episodes talk about, I grew up in the 90s, and uh, the early 90s especially, and the late 80s, there was a thing going on in the culture called Satanic Panic. Kids, look it up. But if you're old enough to remember Satanic Panic, that was this thing where religious people uh, thought that like heavy metal music and dun Dungeons and Dragons were going to come corrupt your soul and, you know, send you to demonic hell or whatever. And during Satanic Panic, I was going to church and this guy came to our church and he was a, like I don't remember, but he was like billed as a Satanic Music Expert. If you know anything about the Judas Priest trial, they were put on trial. This is so fucking ridiculous to say this now in 2019. But they were put on trial, and if I'm not mistaken, they were put on trial because some cat had killed themselves, and they blamed, like, backwards messaging in their music, and it was just a complete sham and one of the most ridiculous things that has ever happened in music. But anyway, this guy was a satanic music expert, and he came into the little church that I went to, and he had a reel-to-reel -reel so he could play stuff backwards and forwards, because apparently, back in the 80s and 90s, metal bands were putting hidden messages in their songs to get their fans to kill themselves, you know, to really help out with those record sales. So anyway, this guy came in, and I was there, and I'll never forget it, I was in the back pew, man, and this guy played Iron Maiden, and Ozzy Osbourne, and Judas Priest, because I think this was right around the time of that trial, and then he played Slayer, and I'll never forget it, I was in the back of the church and this guy did not do his job at all because a young Steve was back there taking mental notes going man I, that sounds amazing that's the shit man I gotta buy that so this guy came in and he was supposed to uh, discourage us from listening to this demonic music that was going to damn our souls to hell and all it did was make me a heavy metal fan I think this was right around the Rain and Blood, uh, or maybe it was Seasons in the Abyss, and I think he played something from one of those two records. And man, I'd, I'd, I'd listened to Metallica by then, uh, you know, I'd listened to Megadeth, I probably had come to Pantera by then. 
And it was unlike anything I'd ever heard. Man, I was like 12, 13, dumb male, and that's exactly what I wanted to hear at the exact right time to hear it. So that's my story about how I came to find out about Slayer. So, now let's get into it. You have to make this face when you listen to Yeah, yep, yep, yep. I think a big uh, part of this video is going to be talking about efficiency of movement, speed, and perfect technique, because that's what you're watching right here. Right off the bat, I'm not a big fan of that angle of his drums. I like to have my drums as flat as possible, but of course I play traditional grip and I don't play thrash metal, uh, but who cares about all that? Watch him play. Look at where his cymbals are. They're not way up here in the, in the air. They're in the most efficient placement that can be because this stuff is so fast. There's no room for wasted motion and histrionics and all this bullshit. It's about keeping that speed and that power going. Yeah, man. I found this stuff out when I was like 13, 14 and had to, man, it was just what I needed. But again, just like watch the way he plays, he's playing obviously fast, he's playing loud, he's playing in Slayer, the gods of thrash metal, but he's not overplaying, he's letting, you've heard me talk about this before, he's letting the microphones do their work. You know, when you're doing, and I know that's not a blast beat, I don't know what you would call that, I don't know the names of all those blast beats, man, you can go to that other, you can go to the hip flexor guy for all that stuff, but just efficiency of motion nothing he has no time to have wasted motion yeah you gotta have a rod symbol that heavy and I'm sure he's playing with uh, nylon tips to cut through just this extreme distortion Whew, it's like a breather it's like oh god I can breathe could never play this style of music. I'd have to, I'd have to kick up the cardio. Mmm, right here. This is where the mosh pit gets real violent. And you have these breakdowns, you know. It's a big thing, like, uh, I think today, a lot of today's, like, extreme speed bands forget to have the breakdown. Like, things are just so ridiculously fast. It's almost like an arms race. I think a lot of the, the, the thrash metal that I, uh, and I'm only really, uh, 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 I only hear it from students who bring it in. Shout out Cross, I have a student right now who always wears t-shirts of bands that have logos that you can't read. But man, it's almost become like a cartoon arms race. Like the song doesn't really even matter anymore. It's just see how much extreme speed we can get. Listen to Slayer, children. Sometimes you gotta have that breakdown to give that song some air and a chance to breathe and to give your moshers a chance to beat the shit out of each other just a little bit more. There's not gonna be any odd time, uh, you know, cheeky bullshit. This is just fist in your face visceral kick-assery. Yeah, man. I've had a lot of students, not a lot, but I've had uh, some students over the years that, you know, are into this style of playing, and man, it's a really hard thing for me to do because I can't play like this. This is kind of a style of music that you just, you just, this is the style you play. That being said, I think I've heard I've heard him play in other stuff. Seems like he's in Phantomus with Mike Patton, and that's a little different. Yeah, like seems like you just have to start out playing double bass, and just everything is fast as fuck. 
Let's talk about that speed. That's something we can get out of this video today. Education time, kids. Uh, speed. Uh, one of the biggest things that I get asked about, like top five questions, is how do I get fast? And man, there's no other, uh, there's no other fix. There's no other way to do it than just play with a metronome, track your tempo with that metronome, and always be trying to move that metronome up. If you can play 16th notes at 200, next week try to make it 205, in two weeks make it 210, and on and on and on, and it's repetition. I think, and this may be controversial and I may get blown up in the comments section, but I think that speed is one of the easiest things to develop because there's really no coordination to it. You know, we're not dealing with, uh, you know, uh, four-way independent uh, Latin jazz or anything like that. It's just, do you have the ambition to sit down and for like two hours work on your singles and work on your speed? Because there's nothing else to it than playing fast but that's not to say that it's not it's not hard to do because it is and especially like this you got to figure he's playing an hour and a half of these breakneck tempos at all times man you got to be in some good shape man unless you're gene hoglin gene hoglin's kind of a unicorn in that in that sense but you got to be in shape to be able to keep this speed up and this just extreme drumming going so speed 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 as i tell my students man if there was a drug that i could give you to make you faster i'd buy that shit by the ounce but there's not it's just good old elbow grease set down get that metronome out and work up those singles <laughs> Ooh, triplets Yeah, again, like I could never play my, my toms at that angle. That'd be playing like this, playing traditional. I could never play like him. Yeah, man, cardio is an issue when you're playing this shit. <laughs> Bardo is giving a little some love to the, somebody to the side. Yeah, he's not overplaying. You don't see him playing big over his head because there's no time. And he's just playing just loud enough to get the feel and the attitude of the song. And he's letting those microphones do their work. Yeah, boy. <laughs> Just this constant barrage of, of, of notes and, and those things just add up to just a just a punch to your gut and soul. This music isn't like you don't listen to this music, this music is like done to you, if you know what I mean. Ah, yeah, buddy. Again, okay, right here. Right here, he's using his hip flexors. I never knew what that meant. I'm not trashing that guy. He, he's cool. Uh, but yeah, like watch right here. Uh, if you notice, man, all you know, I know you can't see my legs, but he's not using, he's not coming up that hot, that far to keep this these 30 second notes going right here. Use your hip flexors. There is room for comedy in Satan's music. <laughs> My metal band, which is kind of a stoner sludge doom band, there is one section where I play that groove and it's only for like 16 measures. When we get done with it, I am spent. Couldn't imagine doing a whole song doing like playing like that. <laughs> Yeah, man. Was that okay? I like that. He's like uh, talking to a fan off to the side being like, was that okay? Was that cool enough for you? Uh, Slayer, Dave Lombardo, back in the day, you know, Paul Bostaff plays with him now. Unfortunately, uh, there's a YouTube video of Dave Lombardo actually talking about the business side of Slayer. And it seems like there's some money issues. And that's why he wasn't with Slayer towards, you know, at the end. And man, that's a big bummer. 
But if you've been in this business for any amount of time, you know, it's not just music. It's the music business. And, you know, that, that bread comes into it. And it seems why he's not with them anymore. I'm not sure. You can go watch that video. I've watched a few times. And he, he, does, a, he does a breakdown of, like, the finances. And that, that, that sucks, man. Because he's the godfather, in my opinion. Yeah, I know there's, like, bands maybe before them. You know, I think Anthrax probably was around at the same time, too. But he's the, he's the beginning and Slayer in general, where they were taking, you know, Black Sabbath and, you know, what we not thought, you know, an Iron Maiden and metal, but then like infusing punk speeds into it. And it just became this amazing thing. And they're the ultimate underground band. Unlike other bands that will remain nameless, they never tried to make the pop record, man. Even when Megadeth made Symphony of Destruction so they could get on MTV, Slayer was like, man, no thanks. We're just going to be keep doing our music. One more story, one more story time before we go. I just thought about this. Uh, I gave that kid a shout out. I have a student right now who's, you know, into this style and I'm in the process of getting him there. And Slayer came to my hometown and I didn't get to go because my dad had a, a, a very serious hospital uh, emergency and I didn't get to go. Uh, my pops made it through, so that's good. Shout out to Big Steve. But my student did go and he was just you know, like so happy. He was like, I got... Uh, tickets in the mosh pit and this kid's like you know five ten a buck ten i was like this kid's gonna get his ass kicked because i've been in some mosh pits in my younger days came back the the week after that concert and old boy was like man it was great somebody threw a glass of pee on me and i was like dude you have the most metal story ever so dave lombardo slayer angel of death check him out uh i don't know if that tour is over but it's getting close, so if you want to see Slayer, you better go soon. So if y'all enjoyed all that, please like, comment, and share. Uh, give me a double tap on the, on the subscription and the notification bell. And remember, hell Satan, and keep practicing until it's easy.